Although there have only been around 200 Tesla semi-trucks built so far, real-world applications and real-world testing of these trucks has proven that the Tesla semi can truly replace a large majority of diesel semi-trucks on the market without compromises, and here's why. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. You've probably heard people say or read social media posts basically claiming that a battery electric semi truck is not practical. And some of the common reasons people give for that is that an electric truck like the Tesla semi must weigh too much and thus it could damage roads. Or um, even if it doesn't damage roads, you're not going to be able to carry as much cargo as a diesel semi truck and thus it would not be economical for companies to necessarily use a Tesla semi. Other people might claim that there's no way that an electric semi truck could have enough range to replace a diesel truck or specifically maybe people that know a little bit more. And this is more of a valid response, but I'll address this as well. But maybe people would claim that diesel semi trucks can't be replaced by battery electric semi trucks because there just isn't the charging infrastructure available right now. And maybe they could talk about um, maybe they don't charge fast enough and you'd have to wait too long to charge etc. Well, I want to address these specific issues and show that the Tesla semi truly can replace diesel semi trucks on the road. And I believe once again, without compromises in many situations. With that being said, I now want to address that first objection. And that's the objection of the Tesla semi weighing too much. Now, first of all, the idea that the Tesla semi or any electric semi for that matter, weighs so much that it will damage roads is really beyond ridiculous if you actually understand the way the laws work. On most US roads, the legal limit for the truck, the trailer, and the load of a typical diesel truck is 80,000 pounds total. And for electric or hydrogen electric trucks, they get an extra 2,000 pounds of weight allowance, making the total weight limit of the truck, the trailer, and the load 82,000 pounds. That means that legally fully loaded electric trucks can only weigh 2,000 pounds more than their diesel counterparts. That's not a huge amount. That's not damaging roads. It's not as if these trucks with a load weigh like twice as much as a diesel truck. That's just not the case. And that's because of the laws in place. Now, when it comes to the actual weight of the truck and when we talk about cargo, that is important. If an electric truck weighs too much, that means that once again, because there is a limit, the gross weight limit there of 82,000 pounds fully loaded for a truck, if that truck weighs too much, then that of course takes away from the weight of the cargo that you can carry. But thankfully, even on that front, the Tesla Semi is right in line with the average weight of a diesel truck. This is pretty incredible for an electric semi truck that gets 500 miles of range. But according to official information from Dan Priestley, this is actually the case. Now, Elon and the Tesla team have said several times in the past that essentially the Tesla semi could haul the same payload as the average diesel semi truck. However, I get the feeling based on YouTube comments that I've come across articles and news reports that many people thought that this was an exaggeration or even a lie and that the Tesla semi had to weigh a lot more than diesel semi trucks. With that being said, though, I estimated that the Tesla semi probably weighed somewhere around 25,000 pounds, just the truck itself. And that was my guesstimation based on various pieces of data that we've had over the years. But thankfully, we finally got a more official weight estimate from Dan Priestley, who took part in an event that happened at Europe, an IAA event that happened in Europe. And this is a transportation expo that was recently held. And specifically during his presentation, his keynote presentation, this slide went up which showed that the long range Tesla semi weighs less than 10,500 kilograms. So if the Tesla semi truck weighs under 10,500 kilograms, that means it weighs just a little bit over 23,000 pounds, or specifically here on this chart, I'm estimating right at 23,000 pounds, give or take a little bit. And if you look at how that compares to a typical diesel semi truck, if both trucks have a trailer weight that weighs 10,000 pounds, you can see that the cargo capacity there for a diesel semi truck versus the Tesla semi, the Tesla semi very well can haul somewhere around 49,000 pounds of cargo weight if it has a 10,000 pound trailer. And that's right in line with what a diesel semi truck, the average diesel semi truck can carry 
as well, especially if you subtract a thousand pounds of diesel fuel weight that you have to keep in mind with a diesel truck. So it's exciting that already the Tesla Semi is competitive when it comes to cargo weight, but it looks like it's going to get better. During that IAA Transportation Expo event, Dan Priestley also mentioned specifically talking about the weight of the Tesla Semi quote. Now these numbers, particularly the mass ones, represent today. And there's no exemptions factored in here. No weight exemptions. And on top of that, we think that there are additional levers to pull to reduce these masses even further. When it comes to different levers that can be pulled, of course, you can increase the efficiency of the truck itself. You can increase the energy density of the batteries and thus have a lighter battery pack, or you can redesign the truck slightly to optimize for weight. There are various things that can be done to make the truck lighter, but as is, it's already competitive. So when it comes to an argument that the Tesla Semi weighs too much, that has been proven to be incorrect. The Tesla Semi does not weigh too much. It is very competitive when it comes to the amount of cargo weight that it can carry versus a diesel Semi. Okay, now I want to address another big objection and that's range. Does the Tesla Semi truck really get enough range to replace most diesel Semi trucks? And the answer to that question is yes. According to a report from energy.gov, around 87% of all truck freight tonnage was shipped less than 250 miles. Since the Tesla Semi is rated to get 500 miles of range, and as a reminder, that's 500 miles of range fully loaded, because of that, right off the bat, it's able to replace 87% of the loads that are being run with typical diesel semi trucks. That's pretty incredible right off the bat, but beyond that, it can actually replace a little bit more than that because once again, 500 miles of range can replace more than 87%. Yes, there are cases where the Tesla Semi will not work, but nonetheless, for the vast majority of the loads on the road, the Tesla Semi can do the job. A real world example that I wanna reference, and this is something that I have addressed in a previous video, but during an event, the Run On Less event, PepsiCo actually showed that the Tesla Semi with a slip seat operation was able to, in a 24 hour period, drive 1,076 miles, which is pretty incredible for a battery electric semi truck. But PepsiCo does actually run Tesla semis with a slip seat operation, meaning that there are drivers that do shift changes with the truck so that the same truck is in operation for more than just one driver's shift. When it comes to a comparison of other electric semi trucks during that run on less event back in 2023, you can see that with PepsiCo's Tesla Semi fleet, not only by far did they have the longest distance traveled in a 24 hour period, 1,076 miles, and their fleet average per day, 613 miles, was way more than the competition, but the total distance traveled during that event by the Tesla Semi fleet was over 27,000 miles and no other fleet was even close to that. The truth is those other electric semi trucks are not able to replace as many diesel semi trucks as the Tesla Semi. The Tesla Semi truly is the best in the industry and events like this really prove that to be the case. Now, a lot of you may already know this, but as a reminder, when it comes to electric vehicles in cold temperatures, they do get less range than in more ambient temperatures. So specifically, here is a chart from Tessie's website showing Tesla's vehicles, their Model S, 3, X, and Y, their efficiency by temperature. And you can see, for example, at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you're only expected to get around 60% of the stated vehicle's range. Maybe Tesla has worked some magic when it comes to the thermal management system of the Tesla Semi and it's better than this, but let's just say conservatively, the Tesla Semi can get up to 300 miles of range in cold temperatures at 10 degrees Fahrenheit or so. And of course, at even colder temperatures, that would probably come down a little more, but let's just go with that. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that when it comes to maintaining good battery health, it's best not to commonly fully discharge the battery and keep it charged up at 100% for long periods of time, at least for nickel-based chemistries. So in an ideal situation, you would not discharge below 10% and you would not commonly charge above 90%. Of course, dipping a little bit below that and a little above that sometimes is not gonna kill your battery pack, but if you wanna maintain good battery health, you should kind of maintain those kind of practices. So in that particular scenario, maintaining good battery health, you would expect around 400 miles of usable range out of the Tesla Semi during the summer and during winter around 10 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around 240 miles of usable range. So cold weather is a significant hit on the Tesla Semi's range. However, once again, 87% of US truck freight tonnage was shipped less than 250 miles. 
So yes, there are less applications of the Tesla Semi in cold weather, but it doesn't mean it can't still cover a lot of applications, once again, less than 250 miles. It can still meet those obligations even in cold weather. In addition to that, diesel semi trucks even have issues in cold weather as well, and they become less efficient. In the past, I was emailing someone who watches this channel who reached out to me, and this person, Craig, is a diesel semi truck driver. And specifically, he referenced the fact that when it comes to cold weather, you have to put fuel additives in the system to make sure that the fuel doesn't gel. In addition to that, when it comes to cold weather, Craig also referenced the fact that fuel filters can freeze, the engines run for longer periods of time, and I'll talk about that. You have to add extra DEF fluid, and maintenance also goes up once again due to longer run times. Craig specifically wrote to me, quote, if I had to put a number on it, we lose 20% or more on short haul fuel economy, considering all the complications with diesel. When it comes to extended runtime, Craig specifically referenced that, quote, trucks will run almost constantly in the winter. Our fleet trucks do not shut off if below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. When it's not that cold, they are plugged in with a block heater and a 30 minute warm up per shift. The increased idling causes increased DEF consumption. Another common objection is related to charging speed and charging infrastructure. When it comes to charging speed, the Tesla Semi currently charges fast enough to even enable slip seat operations with more than one team driving the same truck. For example, on day 17 of the Run On Less event in 2023, a Tesla Semi in PepsiCo's fleet was able to travel 1,076 miles within a 24 hour period. And as you can see during that day, the Tesla Semi was charged three different times. The first charging session took 57 minutes, the second charging session 85 minutes, and the third charging session 23 minutes. And when you consider the fact that the Tesla Semi battery pack is quite large, these charging times are not really bad at all. And they should get even better with time. On the topic of charging, during that IAA Transportation Expo event, Dan Priestley mentioned we are, quote, working through some interesting things on the charging front there as well. And so we'll be unlocking more and more utilization. Now to address the issue of a lack of public charging infrastructure for the Tesla Semi, you have to remember once again that according to my estimates, only somewhere around 200 Tesla Semi trucks have been built. So it's not as if there are a bunch of trucks on the road that need this public infrastructure just yet. Once Tesla starts mass producing the Tesla Semi, which it looks like that's going to be coming in 2026 because they're currently building out their mass production factory. Once that happens, then there will be a need for a more public charging infrastructure. And I believe that's when Tesla will start to build that out strategically as they sell these trucks to various companies. And as that is needed, they'll start putting this infrastructure in place. So I expect that we'll start seeing some of these first sites be announced and go online sometime in the next 12 to 24 months as production of the Tesla Semi starts to ramp up and as mass production actually starts. It wouldn't make sense for Tesla to put in a bunch of infrastructure right now because there aren't enough Tesla Semis on the road. And as far as I know, most of the Tesla Semis that are on the road are either in Tesla's fleet or PepsiCo's fleet and their depot charging work just fine for their applications. What PepsiCo has done is at their warehouses, at their locations, they've actually put in Tesla mega chargers so that they're able to charge up their trucks right there on site and they call it depot charging. So they don't necessarily need to have external public charging stations for their Tesla semis. They just do the route such that at the depot, they charge up the trucks enough to go do the route and come back and then charge up again. So that works well for, I believe, the vast majority of companies with their routes to actually put their own chargers in at their depot and run the trucks that way. So in conclusion, the Tesla Semi really can replace a large majority of the diesel semi trucks on the road. So I'm really excited to see mass production happen in the not too distant future as Tesla builds out their mass production factory in Nevada. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you are a commercial truck driver and you want to share some insights with me about either your opinion on the Tesla Semi or some more information about driving a diesel semi, maybe things that I've missed, please feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. I love to know your opinion, not only on the Tesla semi, but any insight that you can give on the industry with diesel semi truck driving, commercial truck driving, anything that you believe would be helpful. I do appreciate 
all of you watching this video. And I wanna say thank you to all of those of you who do support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.